Describe the profile of a student with whom you are using or anticipate using the Bliss tactile symbols. I've been trialing Bliss symbols with a 20 year old in my classroom who is blind. She has no eyeball in one eye and then she has a retinal displacement in the other one. Uh, she also is diagnosed with an intellectual disability. So the student is a uh, primary kindergarten age student who has a, a variety of needs due to a rare genetic disorder. Due to her physical and medical needs, she's not able to access your more typical communication systems. I would consider different types of children, not just a student with a vision impairment. I'd consider those with multiple sensory impairments, possibly vision and hearing. I would definitely consider any child, you, always, you often hear teachers say, well, he's too low. And so any child that I, I think maybe they're not ready to attend to some of the visual boards, I would definitely introduce these. I know I've had a lot of students, even with autism, that really like to fidget and hold things. So I think I, I would use these as a way to almost supplement the communication with another system. The students that I would use this kind of system with would be students who, well, visually impaired, with kind of limited communication skills, limited verbal speech, who just kind of need some fundamental beginnings of like beginning to communicate in a way that they understand. I, I think back to one particular student that I had, and she had fetal alcohol syndrome. And with fetal alcohol syndrome, you've got really some atypical learning patterns. But one of the things is that that contrast. And so for her, she always liked to fidget and she almost needed something in her hands to hold. And I would have definitely used these with that child because they would have been really beneficial. So for her, that's one of the first classrooms we're going to target and we're going to see because she, uh, she has got a uh, mild hearing impairment and then she's got cognitive impairment mm -hmm. and she's also had a very transient lifestyle. So uh, it's, life has been very inconsistent for her. So we want to have a very consistent system and we're starting out with 20 of the symbols. When would you use the Bliss tactile symbols with a visually impaired or non-speaking student? So we wanted something that was easy to make, that was long lasting, that could be, you know, carried by the student themselves. And, and also on top of that, like something that could help develop, develop the, the student's language and literacy. Mm -hmm. So Bliss symbol fit all of that. Bliss symbols can help like increase language use and to answer like predetermined questions during a lesson that's like one of the the main uses that my student that, that my student does also they use bliss symbols as a schedule so that they can anticipate what's coming next and they can also anticipate what's expected of them so we wanted something that was easy to make that was long lasting that could be carried by the student themselves again they're very durable which is another huge advantage because I have a, a lot of sensory seeking students and sensory reliant students in my classroom who enjoy using the tactile symbols for um, you know uh, to help them focus during the day but if one of those gets lost I can put one in the in the software and 24 hours later I've got it again for her to use. Okay I, I feel it's really important with um, these students that we use the symbols to communicate with them as right. well as for them to be able to communicate with us. And you know, for so many of these kiddos with the reduced vision, all of a sudden they're just moved or right. they arrive at places and they don't know. So we were trying to use the symbols more of like that go and finish to represent things that are kind of more abstract. So what I, why would I, I would pick it because trying to get kids to kind of just tap on something that does not differentiate in any sort of way, such as with any kind of communication device where it's just a flat button. Um, it's not as meaningful. They don't want to explore it. It's, it takes so much effort to try mm. to get them to touch something, as opposed to them being having the chance to just, to just feel something and run their fingers over it and explore it independently, trying to get them to, to touch something on their own, um, rather than me doing, having them like hold their hand, hand over hand. I'd rather them start to develop their independence that way. Many of the students that we work with, especially some of the low incident students, they don't have enough experience holding a variety of objects. And I think that this might be a more engaging way to start using a language system 
rather than like a regular typical communication board. You know, my my hope is that we're starting with very young children when we're introducing this. Although I do have a certain classroom right now that I'm trying to introduce it. Actually, we are introducing it and it's a middle school girl who has a vision impairment and cognitive uh, disability and a lot of behaviors right now. Mm -hmm. um, and she needs a, a, a form of communication. So I'm working with some teachers there to try to introduce it. I would like to see a set in every every um, classroom that is self-contained as a supplement. And there's a lot of flexibility with them. So I would try to match some of the vocabulary being used in the classroom. So it's an alternative and not necessarily one or the other. I think we often hold our students with disabilities to a higher standard where they only get one means of communication. And I would look at this as just a, a powerful tool as a part of a communication system. Any child that is not responding to a typical communication system or any child who's slowly progressing on another communication system, I might uh, supplement it with this as a, as a tactile means to support communication with the system. Every, every classroom that has those students that somebody thinks doesn't have potential, I would definitely want a set of these in there. What advantages you see in using the bliss tactile symbols with students? So she, in the past, had been using symbols that we created using the Texas School for the Blind and Visually Impaired Dictionary. And those were working okay, but they're handmade and not the same person all the time can make the symbols. So there, there is room for inconsistencies based on how we perceive the symbols and then also the materials that are available to us at any given time. Everyone else in my class has a diagnosis of intellectual disability or multiple disability. And the fact that they're, re they're, they're interested in the symbols and that they want to learn with my 20 year old student, you know, show, shows me the accessibility that, that Bliss symbols have. Uh, they've been through the washing machine and the dryer. <laughs> you know, they, they've been ran over, they've been thrown across the room and they're still usable. So the more we looked into this, the beauty of the Bliss symbols is that it exists. You know, it's an existing um, system or whatever. And it's always easy to create a new one that's already standardized instead of starting over and recreating. The consistency is what's really nice. As they move to programs, that part's, you know, going to remain the same. Their size is nice. There are a lot of things that already exist out there that are tactile, if you will, symbols. They can often end up being very big. So the size of these is perfect that they can always be with the student is important. I also like to, the amount of information on them is yes. just enough. Often there's too much on things, students can end up being distracted versus getting the needed information. They seem more inclined to touch it. Uh -huh. I think that has to be the biggest thing. They seem more inclined to explore it on their own without me having to constantly grab their hand and be like, you push this button. You don't know right. where it is. Don't know what it looks like. <laughs> push this button right. as opposed to they put their hand over it and they just even touching it sometimes because I have it on top of an AAC device. They put their hand over it and they explore it and it triggers the sound. So now right. we're linking sound to symbol. Um, and I love that. You know, one of the benefits to the bliss symbols is it's a generative system. There's so many options. It's, it's a full vocabulary system. There's 3000 symbols at our fingertip that we can produce. Um, so there's nothing that we can't work on to teach that child language. I like these particular tactile symbols uh, because, well, they're easy to hold. So yeah. it's, it's engaging. It's something to hold. You're, it's just, yeah. you know, you're always trying to find different manipulatives to get kids interested. And our, our kids often are, um, they, they don't have the opportunity to manipulate things. You really do need that more simple shape. And so one of the, the advantages to the bliss symbols is they're very simple shapes and when you combine the shapes, then it actually makes more generative language. Yeah, I just think, I just think it has so much potential. I, I am really excited about them.